It's once again that time to finish another section of the Trans-American Trail. Leaving Lexington, Kentucky at 4 a.m. This time we're joined again by our good friend, Nathan Straub. We were able to do this section of the Trans-American Trail with help from our partners, X-Venture Trailers, and in association with Overlander.com. And also from our awesome sponsors. Nathan and I are in Teleco Plains, where I finished up the first section of Trans America Trail I ever did in North Carolina, from North Carolina down to here. We did it. Teleco Plains. We did 527.8 miles of the Trans America Trail, starting from Damascus, uh, Virginia, uh, all the way down the North Carolina section, and ended up here in Teleco Plains. As per usual, it doesn't take long to get right onto the trail. It's the beginning of spring and it looks like it's going to be perfect weather for the whole trip. One thing I couldn't wait to try out was our new Gladiator 2.5 inch premium lift from Clayton Offroad in combination with our Falcon 3.3 adjustable shocks. Didn't really know what to expect from this part of the trail, but it didn't take long to see what we're going to be getting into. The Tennessee Mountain has some of the most beautiful mountain streams you've ever seen. There had been torrential rains the week before, so we didn't know what we were going to get into when it comes to the water crossings. Turns out, we had just enough clearance to make it through these sections safely while running solo. If this first section was a gauge on what the rest of the trail is going to be, this is going to be an awesome trip. previous week's storms have also taken their toll on the deadfall. This little 12 volt DeWalt chainsaw is worth his weight in gold. We couldn't be happier that all the forest road gates so far have been open. If you're looking for a good three to four day trip and you live in the Tennessee area, I recommend this section above all others we've done so far. The little pieces of Americana you come across on this trail are worth the trip alone. You'll also hear us say in other videos, we love traveling during the winter time or when there's no leaves or little leaves on the trees because the views are unbeatable. There's nothing technically too hard about this trail. It's still a lot of fun. The Tennessee section of the Trans America Trail actually travels through four states. It dips down into Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi. The first little dip down into Georgia is at Copper Hill, Tennessee, where we stopped at the Copper Hill Brewery and had a quick beverage. Then a Cuban sandwich before we hit the road again. Just 
just outside Copper Hill, we hit our first closed section of trail, right at the beginning of the Big Frog Loop Mountain area. But luckily, the year before, we had already done that whole loop, so we weren't missing any sections of the main trail. We hope this section reopens soon for anybody trying it, because it is something to see. We picked the trail back up 20 miles northwest around Parksville Lake. From the Virginia section all the way through Tennessee, it always amazes me how fast you can change elevation. In this area, we had found a few decent camp spots, but they were very exposed and it was extremely windy at the higher elevations. I know there are beautiful views from out west, but you still can't beat the ones in Appalachia. Make sure you put a waypoint on your maps for Barnes Creek Falls. It was getting late and all of our planned camp spots were on the closed section, so we pushed on for another four to four and a half hours just to find a decent forestry camp spot. Between Nathan and I, camp setup went very quick. We were a third of the day past where we had planned camping, so the next morning we weren't in a huge rush. I slept great, but apparently Nathan not so much. Was it a rough night of sleep? <laughs> it was a little rough. There were bears everywhere coming into the tents. I fought them off. Jeremiah didn't do a damn thing. I had to do it all myself. My hands are bloody. I wiped them up clean so they can't see it now. Plus they're under my leg. But we made it. Day one in the books. Day two. It was about an hour and a half drive to get to Maddie's on Main for some really good country breakfast. For the first day and a half, we had been heading southwest. Now that we're at the bottom of the state, it's time to head west. There was only one last mountainous area to cross through, and that's the Crawford Pigeon Mountain WMA. I'm going to come back to this area just to spend some time in camp. 20 miles down a forestry road coming down the back side of the mountain range, we came across something you just don't see every day. The Google had done him wrong. This poor guy had made it past six other switchbacks before getting stuck on this one. We barely made it past. He didn't want help. He was waiting on a wrecker that probably would never come. From this area forward, it looks a lot like Kentucky. We cross over from Georgia to Tennessee, to Alabama, back into Tennessee, and through endless fields of yellow flowers. There aren't really any national forest sections through the center of Tennessee, so we ended up finding a campground, the Sycamore Campground in Taco Shack, the same one the Mountain State Overland guys camped at. They weren't open because they had experienced massive flooding, but they still let us camp on the highest ground in the area. Anybody doing the Trans-American Trail, stop here. These guys went above and beyond to make us feel at home. After a good night's sleep, it was got your six coffee time. We knew going to this morning, first thing would be a pretty wide water crossing. Due to all the flooding, we didn't know if we could do it. After throwing up the drone, we saw that it was easily passable and continued on our merry way. The trails on the west side of the state 
are a mix of forestry roads, roads that follow creeks, roads through creeks, where the roads were creeks, but all around beautiful and relaxing. We stopped in the small town of Waterloo at the Waterloo Market for a quick lunch and some gas before heading for the last section of the trail. There was only about 60 miles left and those last 60 miles were some of the nicest maintained gravel roads through backcountry and logging areas. So we are near the end and I was really looking forward to this part of the trail. It crosses over a bunch of long stretches of water that have paved road under the water and it is majorly flooded. So we're going to pick up here on our next section heading out west and continue on then. Join us next time when we pick up from where we left off and head west.